Today we're going to do solving rational inequalities, which is 5.5 from Nelson's Advanced Functions textbook. So there's um, a couple of different things when you're solving an inequality that don't work when you're solving an equality. And in particular, that is that you can't just cross multiply. You can only cross multiply if you're assured that the denominator will always be greater than zero. Or else, as you know, that would mean there'd have to be a change in direction of the inequality. So that would only work if you were dealing with a word problem. And I'll do the, uh, the last question I'm going to do is actually the first question in your textbook, the example that they give. And they talk about it's a word problem that involves time. And because time is always greater than zero, then that would be an instance where you could do some cross multiplication. But to be safe, you're best to bring everything to one side of the equation and set it equal to zero or less than or greater than or equal to zero in the, whichever case it is. So here we have 2 over x minus 5 is less than 10. So what I want to do, first of all, is bring the 10 to this side. Then I'm going to have to find a common denominator so that I can combine these. And then we're going to use some of our great graphing skills that you have learned in the last um, couple of sections. And if you've got that nailed well, then you'll find the inequalities are pretty easy to solve. So I'll show you a couple of different methods. And here we go. OK, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to move the 10 to the other side, which would make it minus 10. And now that's going to be less than zero. Watch your inequality. Don't lose it on the way. Don't change it to equals or something like that. OK, so now I need to um, make a common denominator. So that means I'm going to have to put this over x minus 5. And of course, whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator. So I'm going to multiply that by x minus 5. And I'm going to have 2 minus 10x plus 50, watch your negative signs, over x minus 5 is less than 0. And if I simplify that, that's just going to be 52 minus 10x is less than 0 over x minus 5. Now, when we are solving to what makes something equal to 0, I only needed to know what made the numerator 0. And in this case, because I want to know where it is less than zero, I'm going to need to check different intervals of the function to see where the graph is greater than or less than zero. And of course, that means where is it going to be above the um, x-axis? So if I were to solve the numerator now, so um, minus 10x is equal to minus 52, probably should have left that positive x is equal to 5.2. So this is my x-intercept now. So I can put that on my graph. This is going to be 5 here, and that's going to be 5.2. And I also know that I have um, an asymptote at x equals 5. So I'm going to just make a dotted line here. And you should look ahead here and tell me if you can tell me what the horizontal asymptote is going to be for this function. So if you look at the function here, you can see that we have the same degree in the numerator and the denominator. So that means that the asymptote is going to be the ratio of the leading terms, in which case this would be minus 10 over 1 or minus 10. So I have an asymptote here. This is also really good extra practice for you to do your graphing skills, right? y equals minus 10 x equals 5. So what I want to check now is um, I know this x minus 5. I know that's an odd asymptote. And I have to go through this point here. It's a single root. I should also make note of that. It's a single root. You should be thinking of all these little things as you're graphing. So that means it's going to have to come through this way if I'm going to approach this horizontal asymptote out here. And if that's going up, that means it's going down on this side. I could probably figure out quite easily what the, um, the y-intercept would be. So for a y-intercept set x equal to 0, 
and I would get um, uh, something like 10 point minus 10.4 right so that's going to be about here so the y-intercept is here um, this is going down on this side this is going to have to come up through here and there's a pretty decent sketch of my function so what I want to know though is where is this less than zero less than zero so the function is less than zero here and it's less than zero when I get past this 5.2 let me write that on here 5.2 so I can tell by looking at my graph that my solution should be that x is going to be an element of now I'm not including negative infinity so remember you need round brackets infinity is always a round bracket anyway and I'm going to 5 which is an asymptote and then it's also um, less than zero when I go past 5.2 so 5.2 round bracket and then out to positive infinity so there's my solution now there are um, other techniques for this and that would include what I've written here to check the signs and the intervals so first we have to set up our intervals so we have um, at 5 we have a vertical asymptote and at 5.2 we have an x-intercept so other than that the horizontal asymptote is really not relevant here we don't need it in our number line um, guess guess and check or I forget what they call it like trial and error kind of thing so I want to know what happens when x is in this interval in this little interval here and a third interval would be from 5.2 and forward so some teachers like you to make a table so if the if you were to make a table you'd say well let's let's write one out so you'd say negative infinity to 5 and then you'd have another interval from negative oh, sorry 5 to 5.2 and then you'd have another interval from 5.2 to infinity and what you would do is you would take some um, take some values and plug them in to see whether or not you're going to have a positive or a negative y value so we would go back to this equation right here and plug in something between minus infinity and 5 I would pick 0 and that would mean it's going to be negative right so because I have 52 divided by negative 5 so that's negative in the next interval between 5 and 5.2 if you put in 5.1 that would give you a positive value here and a positive value here so that's going to be positive and then from 5.2 to infinity if you pick um, well let's say 6 if I put in 6 here this would be negative on the top and positive on the bottom so that would be negative so again that concurs with the same answer we have here with our graph so we said from negative infinity to 5 I want to know where it's negative right and union that's the big U here 5.2 to infinity okay so that's the first one we're going to do I've got two more this one is from the homework exercise 5 point uh, sorry 5f question 5f it says minus t over 14 minus 1 is greater than or equal to t 2 over t minus 9 so again the first step is to bring it over to the other side of the equal sign or the inequality here so I have minus t over 14 minus 1 and subtract 2 over t minus 9 is greater than or equal to this time 0 okay so now the next step is common denominator so step one bring to left hand side set to zero and then this step is going to be find common denominator CD okay the common denominator is going to have to be a combination of these two so it's a pretty good idea to put these little things in brackets so you make sure you don't do something really silly with them. So I have minus t over t times t minus 9 
minus 2 times 4t minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. And of course, I still have the denominator here, which I've now made common by multiplying each side by what the other one's missing. Okay, so now what you have to do is expand and simplify. So I need to expand the numerator. Minus t squared plus 9t minus 8t plus 2. Leave the denominator alone. Do not try to expand it or do something like that. Because this is where you're going to find your vertical asymptotes. Okay, and what does that leave me with here? So I have minus t squared plus t plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. And then I'm going to factor that numerator to find where the zeros are for the function. So I would pull out the negative. Now you're going to say, well, whoa, 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 I pulled out a negative. Is that going to change the inequality? Only if I divide the other side by it. Okay, so you don't need to divide it. You could if you want, but that would change your sign. You would still get the same answer. You can try that if you want, but believe me, it is true. Uh, multiplies to minus 2 adds to negative 1. That would be t minus 2 times t plus 1 over 4t minus 1 t minus 9 greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so now we're all set to graph this. We have our x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are at minus 1 and 2. So I'm going to put that on here. I have minus 1 and 2. Those are my x-intercepts. I'm just going to make little dots there. They are single roots. What are my asymptotes? So um, vertical asymptotes, t equals 1 quarter, t equals 9. Oh, I guess that's why I kind of made this long. Okay, well, let's just say this is 9 here because I would go off my page, and maybe you can't even see it anyway. So there's one. The other one is at one quarter. So let's say that's here. And these are t's. Let's just say t, and I don't know what the function was. f at t. Okay, so this is going to be t is equal to 9. This is going to be t equals one quarter, right off the page almost here. Okay, so now um, what about a horizontal? Uh, yeah, horizontal asymptote. We've got the verticals. Horizontal, let's slide it back up here for a minute. Let's check the degree. We have a t squared in the numerator and a t squared in the denominator. So this would be minus one t squared if we expanded it. And this would be 4, so minus 1 quarter, horizontal asymptote, y equals minus 1 quarter. And we'll just sketch that up here on our graph here. y equals minus 1 quarter. So if you've done all those graphing exercises that I gave you in that little quiz, you should be pretty good at graphing these. Okay, so remember that you can cross a horizontal asymptote for finite values of x, and in this case, you obviously have to because this is a single root. The question is, does it come down this way, or is it going up this way? And what you would do is just pick a value. Um, let's do 1, for instance. That would be a nice, easy value to choose. And we're going to plug in 1 into our function here. So we'd have 1 minus 2 is negative 1, uh, negative is positive, and this would be positive. So we have positive on the top, and we're going to plug in 1 here. 4 minus 1 is positive, 1 minus 9 is negative. So that's positive over a negative, means I'm under. I'm going to be under at t equals 1. So that means we have to come up this way and go up there. And these are both single roots. If you look over here, the single, not single roots, I'm sorry, they're odd asymptotes. They both have a degree of 1. So that one's going down. That means this one has to be going down on this side because they're going to go in opposite directions. That goes up. 
this goes down, this goes down, this goes up, and that means this one's going to be coming this way. Okay, so now I have a very good sketch of my function, and I should be able to see where is it greater than or equal to zero. So here, uh, I guess we could have found the y-intercept. Can we find that? Let's see if it's uh, a decent value that we can evaluate. So if I put in zero for t, so that would be, let's try f at zero is going to be equal to minus times minus two times one. And zero here is going to be minus one times minus nine. So that's going to be two ninths. That's my y-intercept. And I guess I kind of drew that wrong, didn't I? Probably a good idea to do that before you sketch it. Okay, so it's going to come, it's coming through like this. Zoop. Okay, you made it prettier. Okay, so now all I have to do is state the intervals. Where is it greater than or equal to zero? So it's going to be, t is going to be an element of, now greater than or equal to, so this time we're going to use square brackets for minus one. It's going to go from minus one to a quarter where we have a vertical asymptote. You cannot cross a vertical asymptote ever. You can a horizontal as in this example here. Greater than, that means I'm going to say union. So I'm going to include two, therefore square bracket, as I said that, two, two, nine. And it's going to be a round bracket on that one because it is a vertical asymptote. Okay, so there's your answer. Simple, just like that. Again, you could do a number line, do, 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 like this, and you would have to put in all your little points like minus one and one quarter, because that's where you have an asymptote, and then you'd have to put two, and you'd have to put nine. And you would have to check all these intervals like from minus infinity to minus one. And then you'd go from minus one to one quarter. And then you would go from one quarter, which is a vertical asymptote, to two. Okay, so you have to do all of these intervals. That's why I don't like doing these ones. Two to nine, boop, 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 and then nine to infinity. So it depends on what your teacher asks you to do. If she likes intervals, you're going to have to do something like this, or maybe she'll let you get away with the number line. Or I would be really happy if my students could do a quick sketch of the function and tell me where it is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so I'm going to do one more example. Stick with me. No surprise. No prizes at the end of this, but you will be smarter. Okay, so this is the one that's in the front of the textbook. Um, you can read it over if you want or um, check the video later, zoom to the end to hear what I have to say about it. So again, this one, this was the one that had the time element in it. So in order for you to solve this, first of all, you need a common denominator and it's just going to be t plus eight times t plus one. So you're going to do that first, greater than zero. You have to multiply this by a t plus 1 because it didn't have that in its denominator and minus 20t times t plus 8. Okay, be very careful with your negative sign as you expand here. So I'm going to do this quickly. 240t plus 240 minus 20t squared minus 160t. Where is that greater than 0? And don't forget about your denominator, t plus 8 t plus one, plus one, there we go. Okay, so you're going to simplify this numerator. Mm -hmm. So I have minus 20 t squared, 240 minus 160, that's going to be 80 t's, and a constant of 240 greater than zero, t plus eight, t plus one. Okay, so now um, there's a common factor here of minus 20. Very smart if you pull that out right away. And then it's very easy to factor. Minus 4t and minus 12. Zip. t plus 8, t plus 1. 
greater than zero. Okay, and this multiplies to negative 12 and adds to negative 4, minus 6 and 2, minus 6, t minus 6, t plus 2. And then you have your t plus 8, t plus 1, greater than 0. So if you were to sketch this function now, you'd have to do um, your asymptotes. Um, there is a horizontal asymptote at minus 20, verticals at minus 8 and minus 1. So let's just do this one using like a number line technique. So we're going to put in all the critical points here. So we have minus 8, minus 8. We have minus 1. Uh, we have minus 2 as well. So we have minus 2. That was an intercept. And we have minus 1 is a vertical asymptote. And we have 6 way out here is another x-intercept. And I'm still trying to find out where is this greater than, greater than 0. So all my intervals, I have to go from minus infinity to minus 8. And then I'm going to do minus 8 to minus 2. These are all going to be round brackets because it's all greater than 0. No equals here. So minus 2 to minus 1 minus 1 to 6, don't stop yet, 6 to infinity. Make sure you're covering all of these intervals, okay? You have to have every one of them in or else you, you'll miss part of the graph. So then what you're going to do is you're going to choose some value between negative infinity and minus 8 and you're going to plug it into this equation. So um, let's do something easy, let's say minus 10 probably the easiest one to do. Now you're looking for the sign. Okay, so you have a negative 20, and then I put in minus 10 minus 6 more is negative. Minus 10 plus 2 is still negative. All over in the denominator, minus 10 plus 8 is negative. Minus 10 plus 1 is negative. So I have five negatives, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's going to give me negative, which is going to be less than. So that's not going to be one of the solutions. So between minus 8 and minus 2. So again, I'm just going to make just like this is over here. Okay, so I always have a negative for the 20. Now I'm going to put in, uh, let's say, minus 5. Minus 5 minus 6, that's negative. Minus 5 plus 2, that's negative. In the denominator, minus 5 plus 8 is positive. Minus 5 plus 1 is negative. So four negatives and a positive, that's going to give me positive solution. Okay, and let's do, let's do this quickly. So we have, we're going to plug in zero. So we have negative, negative, positive, positive, positive. Negative times a negative, positive, positive. What did, what did I say I was going to plug in here? I plugged in zero. That's not going to work. Minus, um, we got to do something like minus one and a half, right? Minus one and a half. So negative, negative, positive, um, positive, negative. That's a negative one. So negative, 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 positive, positive, negative. Da, 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 da. This time we can do the zero. That would be the same as I had there before, which is positive. And between six and infinity, let me bring this one down and get it squished here. So if I put in 10, so I'd have negative, positive, 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 negative. So just add them up, right? If I have one negative, it's going to be negative. Two negatives, it's going to be positive. Two, three negatives, negative. Four negatives, positive, and so on. And there you go. You have your solution. So you're, you want to know where it is greater than zero. So your solution would be um, t is an element of minus 8 to minus 2 union minus 1 to 6. However, this is a question that was a word problem and you'd say, but t is greater than or equal to 0 because it's a time question. So that means that t has to be an element of 0, square bracket, to 6 round bracket. Okay, so um, 
no, not not uh, not square bracket here. Sorry, it should be round because it has to be greater than or equal to zero. So between zero and six. Okay, so that's um, that's your rational equations solving the inequalities. It's a little bit more work than the equations, but I think if you're really good at doing your your graphs by now, you'll find this pretty easy. Bye for now.